And of course, I'm immensely proud of the achievements of this government from getting Brexit done to settling our relations uh, with the continent for over half a century, uh, reclaiming the power for this country to make its own laws in Parliament, getting us all through the pandemic, delivering the fastest vaccine rollout in Europe, the fastest exit from lockdown, and in the last few months, leading the West in standing up to Putin's aggression in Ukraine. And let me say now to the people of Ukraine that I know that we in the UK will continue to back your fight for freedom for as long as it takes. And at the same time, in this country, we've been pushing forward a vast program of investment in infrastructure and skills and technology, the biggest in a century, because if I have one insight into human beings, it is that genius and talent and enthusiasm and imagination are evenly distributed throughout the population. But opportunity is not. And that's why we must keep leveling up, keep unleashing the potential of every part of the United Kingdom. And if we can do that in this country, we will be the most prosperous in Europe. And in the last few days, I've tried to persuade my colleagues that it would be eccentric to change governments when we're delivering so much and when we have such a vast mandate and when we're actually only a handful of points behind in the polls, even in mid-term after quite a few months of pretty relentless sledging and when the economic scene is so difficult domestically and internationally. And I regret uh, not to have been successful in those arguments. And of course, it's painful not to be able to see through so many ideas and, and projects myself. But as we've seen uh, at Westminster, uh, the herd instinct is powerful. And when the herd moves, it moves. And my friends, in politics, no one is remotely indispensable. And our brilliant and Darwinian system will produce another leader equally committed to taking this country forward through tough times, not just helping families to get through it, but changing and improving the way we do things, cutting burdens on businesses and families, and yes, cutting taxes, because that is the way to generate the growth and the income we need to pay for great public services. And to that new leader, I say, whoever he or she may be, I say, I will give you as much support as I can. And to you, the British public, I know that there will be many people who are relieved and uh, perhaps quite a few who will also be disappointed. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. But them's the breaks. I want to thank Carrie and our children, and all the members of my family who have had to put up with so much for so long. I want to thank the peerless British Civil Service for all the help and support that you have given our police, our emergency services, and of course, our fantastic NHS, who at a critical moment helped to extend my own period in office, as well as our armed services and our agencies that are so admired around the world and our indefatigable Conservative Party members and supporters whose selfless campaigning makes our democracy possible. I want to thank the wonderful staff here at Chequers, uh, so to here at number 10, and of course at Chequers, and our fantastic prop force detectives, the one group, by the way, uh, who never leave. Above all, I want to thank you, the British public, for the immense privilege that you have given me. And I want you to know that from now on, until the new Prime Minister is in place, your interests will be served and the government of the country will be carried on. Being Prime Minister is an education in itself. I've traveled to every part of the United Kingdom and in addition to the beauty of our natural world, I found so many people possessed of such boundless British originality and so willing to tackle old problems in new ways that I know that even if things can sometimes seem dark now, our future together is golden. Thank you all very much. Thank you.
Boris Johnson uh, there uh, talking about how sad he is to give up. Star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. At the fifth trumpet, Lucifer and his angels are released from the abyss, torturing those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They will physically appear for all to see. He will come as an angel of light, masquerading as Almighty God, mocking the second coming and placing himself as God, deceiving even the elect if that were possible. Many will marvel and believe the lie. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. Lucifer is allowed to exercise his power for 42 months. The crisis government that will form shortly after the first trumpets is the beginning of the B system in Revelation 13 that will become the only economically viable system globally to function in the current state of the world during those days. At this time, the world will be in ruin and the necessities of life will become scarce in a very short time period. Lucifer will head this government upon his appearing, but the foundation has been laid and the stage set for the events to follow. He will implement a mark, a pledge of allegiance for all those who wish to buy or sell and live sustainably for what short time they have left. This is the mark of the beast. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell.